Okay, good evening, Morai Rabotai. It's another session of the Tuesday night classes, and um, I was asked really to speak a little bit about a davar beitomatov, a mitzvah that really is very much seasonal, even in California in this um, time of the year. And you go out, and it's the uh, the season of, of, of seeing birds' nests and um, and chicks and and so on. So there is the mitzvah that we all know, the mitzvah of shiluach haken, known as kan sipor. That if you see the Torah says in um, in Devarim, in chapter 22, that if you see if you happen to come across a nest of a bird and you see that the mother is, is um, sitting basically on the eggs or on the chicks, says, do not take the mother, do not take the mother together with the kids, with the chicks. But rather, you shall definitely send the mother away, and you could take the, the, the kids, the chicks, or the eggs for yourself. And then the Pasuk says one of the most amazing things that you could find in the Torah, which is the Pasuk actually explains a reward, a schar for this mitzvah. Normally speaking, the Torah does not have schar for the mitzvot. Does not explain the schar. Obviously, there is schar. But the Torah does not explain the schar in the Torah. Only the punishment of the Averot is mentioned, which Rabbi Moshe Feinstein actually wrote a letter. He was asked by the mayor of New York about the Dine Nefashot, about killing people, the judgments that, that, that are, you know, basically the, 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 the top three, the things that a person gets killed for, um, capital punishment and the Jewish law. And Ramosha Feinstein tells him, says, look, the point of capital punishment is not for us to punish. Hashem is the ultimate judge. Like the Gemara says, even after Sanhedrin went to Galut, although we don't carry out the halachot of Arba Mitot Bedin, the, 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 cap, the capital punishment, the death penalty by the Bedin, but Hashem sees to it that someone that is Hayav, that really needs to get the capital punishment, he is going to go that route and automatically he is going to fall, he's going to be run over, or something is going to happen to, to you know, deliver basically the punishment. Hashem is the ultimate judge, he writes. So why is it that the Torah even says the punishments? is only to give us a clue of the severity of the Avera that the person uh, may be coming across and may be tempted to do in order to, to have a deterrence for us not to do it when the Torah says this Avera if you do chas v'shalom karot karit is going to be cut off from, from, from Am Yisrael the Neshama is going to be it's coming to tell us how severe it is but the mitzvot never in the Torah we find normally speaking that the schar of a mitzvah is mentioned with the exception of two places. One is in the mitzvah of Kibud Avayim, the Torah says, Kaved et avicha ved imecha, should certainly respect your, your parents. In order that you should get longevity, which the Gemara explains is not as simple as just living a long life. It goes much beyond that. But whatever that means, that same, very same schar, very same uh, reward is mentioned in the mitzvah of Ken Sipur. This is the second and final, only two places in the Torah that the Torah gives a schar for it. The second one is in this very mitzvah, which the Gemara tells us, that is, is fairly an easy mitzvah to do. It's not really a, a difficult mitzvah. And really the sources of the Chazal and the Midrashic sources, they go even beyond that. You can find sources that this mitzvah is mekarevet ha it brings the geula, the, the redemption, the final redemption closer. We have heavily supported um, sources in the Midrashic sources that this is a skula for having children, actually. The Midrash says in, in, in Tanchuma, Midrash Tanchuma in Parashat Kitetze, that this is a skula for having children. The Midrash Rabbah in Devarim, right on the Pasuk, writes the same thing. And you find 
find it in other sources, um, like Yalkot Shimoni and others as well, that this mitzvah, if you do it, when it says, et abanim lach, you take the children for yourself, it really means even your own children. It's a story that goes around, a famous story, that Rab Chaim Kanievsky Shlita, which now is considered one of the, the elder of the generation, the Urim Vetumim, the, the tzaddik of our generation, when he was much younger, he was learning in Kolel Chazonish, and him and four other peers of his, they did Kansipor, this is the mitzvah of sending the mother and taking the, the, the chicks, and all of them, they had children, some of them they couldn't have children, and all of those five couples, they had children that very year. So, you know, very, very, very interesting and um, enticing mitzvah based on things that are brought in, in the Chazal. And what we want to do is to show that this is not as simple as it sounds. And perhaps if you want to do it, especially now that this is the season, you go to parks, you know, and, and um, they're all kinds of different opportunities to do this mitzvah. Let's at least be more educated to know some of the um, details of this mitzvah that if it comes across, we should at least know what is considered the mitzvah, what is not the mitzvah, because the flip side of this is um, chaim. if you don't do it correctly, perhaps you're playing with um, inflicting pain on animals, which by itself, the Gemara says in Baal Metziah on page 32, that that by itself is a avera deoraita, so therefore we don't want to, we don't want to, um, certainly we don't want to go there. So let's educate ourselves a little bit tonight to see what exactly the boundaries of this mitzvah is. Now, I want to, to make it a little bit more um, interesting, I want to give you two case studies of cases that happened, and what makes it a little more interesting is both of them happened by myself. So we're going to discuss what happened and we're going to go through the different parts of this mitzvah to see if indeed we did the mitzvah or perhaps maybe we're lacking some, some points. Several years ago, many years ago, um, I was visiting Los Angeles this before we, way before we moved to Los Angeles and um, on a nice beautiful day we, we visited one of the parks, the public parks in, in the area of Sherman Oaks and um, the gazebo that we were sitting under hosted many many nests of the birds on the top all around it and uh, we saw one of them was the lowest one, still was not uh, low enough, so we pulled something and, and it climbed up and shooed off, shooed away the, the, the bird that was sitting there. And um, the two chicks were, were, were in the nest, we took them, showed them to the, to the crowd there and put them back on top and we went down. So that's one, I'm not saying the whole story as we go on in the, in the shiur, I'm going to explore a little bit more of the details of what, what was done. And the second was in Baltimore several years ago, we were uh, visiting with the kids to, to, to a park and there, were a, there was a nest, a very large nest of a Canadian um, geese that had three eggs and um, we shoot away the, the bird, the, 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 um, the mother, so to speak, and took one of the eggs and took it home. And we had an incubator, which was a project, a summer project for our kids. We uh, put the egg in the incubator, and lo and behold, this became actually a, a chick, which was raised and then given to a farm. So two cases, I want to know what exactly was done and whether or not this actually was the accomplishment of the mitzvah of Shiluah HaKan or not. But before that, um, first and foremost, it's important to know um, the reasons behind the mitzvah. Just like any other mitzvah, many of the Rishonim tried giving us some understanding why this mitzvah is so important. Specifically, when this is the second only mitzvah that the Torah gives us the reward for it, so Ram, Rambam writes in Moreh Nebuchim, in Chelek Gimel of Moreh Nebuchim, the, the Guide to the Perplex, the famous book of the Rambam, Rambam writes something which um, is debated and perhaps a little bit complex. He says, the reason is Hashem is the compassion on the mother bird, that if you're taking the kids, if you're taking the chicks, the mother should not be there to see that you're, she's being robbed from, from, from the chicks. Therefore, 
you send the mother away. This seems to stand in sharp contrast with something that the Talmud, the Gemara says in Masechet Brachot on page 33b. The Gemara there says, somewhere it's really a Mishnah in the fifth paragraph of, of Brachot. The, the Mishnah says, Haomer, someone that says, uh, several different things. One of the examples is Al Kansi Someone that says Hashem, you're so compassionate, you're so kind that even on a Kansi on a mother bird, you have compassion, and therefore you commanded us to do this. Meshatikin Oto. The Mishnah says we quiet him down because that's not incorrect. It's incorrect. So how does this differ from what Rambam says? Seemingly, Rambam is saying the same thing that the Gemara says not to say. So many are busy. Even Rambam himself perhaps is, is trying to explain why this is different than, than the case of the Mishnah. But nevertheless, Rambam says this is some sort of compassion on the mother, even if it's not the only reason of the mitzvah. Someone that says this is the only reason is downgrading the Torah. Rabbi Nashik Klein, he brings in one of his tshuvot, that even from Chazal, that even a mitzvah da Rabbanan, even a rabbinic enactment, a rabbinic commandment, has over a thousand reasons behind it. So, Koshken, something, you know, it's obvious when something is mentioned in the Torah, has many, many, many layers and levels of depth and understanding, which cannot be simplified, overly simplified, to something um, just emotional. But nevertheless, this is one of the things that, that it includes. The Ramban says it even more clear. The Nachmanides, the Ramban, and the Torah, he brings the Ramban, but he says something more simple. He says, this is in order that we should have compassion, we should become compassionate people. Not because Hashem is it has to care about the petty thing, about the, the feelings of a bird, but he wants us to be compassionate people. So therefore, we are com commanded to even be sensitive to animals. Which, you know, it's an important thing. You find in the Gemara, you find in the Gemara, in Masech HaBa'a Metziah, in the sixth parak, it's the seventh parak around, it's in 84, page 84 of the of, of, of Ba'a Metziah. The Gemara brings a story from Rabbeinu HaKadosh, Rabbi Yudah Nasi, because he failed to show compassion to an animal, to, to a cow, he was uh, punished in his level. He was, um, you know, he was expected to be even sensitive to, to the feelings of the animals and so on and so forth. We all know that animals do have feelings nowadays. We know, and we are perhaps the first ones in the history of of, the, of humanity that we have had a biblical commandment. Not just the rabbinic thing, a biblical commandment to be sensitive to animals. The Gemara in Baba Mitziah on page 32 discusses that, that inflicting pain on animals is actually a biblical prohibition if, you, if it's not for a legitimate reason. So therefore, we have to be compassionate. And, and Ramban actually, just, just in parentheses, Ramban writes, when Jewish soldiers go to war, right afterwards, the Torah says, Hashem should give you compassion and should have compassion on you. And says Ramban, because a person that engages in, in battle and in, in war, and you're killing, in, you know, in, it's inevitable that you're killing people, you're, you're uh, trying to save yourself and your country, by defeating the, the, the enemy or by doing the mitzvah of Kibush Eretz Yisrael, which Ramban holds as the mitzvah Doraita, so Ramban in Mitzvah Dase, um, Sheshachan Harav, Mitzvah Dalet, he says that even nowadays the conquest of Eretz Yisrael is, is a, a biblical mitzvah. So if you're doing those mitzvot, but still he says, nevertheless, you become a cruel person when you engage in battle. So therefore, it's a specific bracha that Hashem gives, that if you're doing a mitzvah of protecting yourself, or kibush Eretz Yisrael, then, the conquest of Eretz Yisrael, then Hashem gives you this bracha to turn back your nature to a compassionate person, and only then He could have compassion on you, if you're a compassionate person. So Ramban is very much consistent with what he says elsewhere, says this is a mitzvah of compassion to teach us to have compassion even on other creatures, even um, on, on, on animals that are not human beings.
And then you have the famous Rabbeinu Bachye, or Rabbeinu Bachaye, that he says that this is a Kabbalistic thing. He says, don't think that this is a simple understanding of a mitzvah. If this is something that the Torah says is equal to the Kibud Ava'em, which is one of the most difficult mitzvot in the Torah, the Gemara says in Kiddushin, in Daf Lamed and Lamed Aleph, the Gemara says, um, page 30, the Gemara says, Abaye, one of the Amoraim used to say, Fortunate is the one that didn't see his parents, because it's so difficult to do misfat ki and never fall, you know, never, never fail to do it properly. So, fortunate is the person that never had the challenge. So, misfat ki is very difficult. So, says Rabbi Bachayim, the reason of this mitzvah is really a kabbalistic mitzvah, the reason which is beyond our scope of understanding. But to just the saber a thousand to explain it a little bit, he says, just like you have a um, mother bird that's hovering around the the nest, and he has she has feelings for the attacked cheeks, so to speak, for the attacked nest. That is simulated to the feeling, so to speak, of Hashem for his creatures, for the Jews, for the other nations, and and, and so on. Like the, the Pasuk says, Yair Kino. Al gozalav like like a, a eagle mother bird that goes hovering around the nest and has compassion on the on the cheeks. The same thing is with 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 Hashem. The pasuk says in the Torah. So, however you understand that, and however you slice it, the deeper understanding is level. So says this enacts and this brings up and boils up the the the, the compassion of. Ribbon Shalom Hashem for Am Yisrael, and perhaps he, he, he's going to have more compassion on them, and so on and so forth. So, that is the three basic reasons that are mentioned in the works of the Rishonim when it comes to the understanding of, of, of this mitzvah. Now, you have to know the gather of the mitzvah. What is the boundary? When is it a mitzvah and when is it not a mitzvah? It's not always a mitzvah to take a bird and you know, shoo it away and take the, 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 um, the chicks. It has boundaries based on the pasuk. Now we're going to go break down the pasuk into different pieces and explain each and every one of them to see how it comes out in a halachic light and then we'll match it up with the two case studies that we mentioned to see if indeed those were properly done or perhaps it was lacking some details. Um, on one hand, you have to understand that um, if you see a, um, a kansi pole, there's a mitzvah to do it. But are you chayav to go around chasing after finding a, a kansi pole or not? There's a mitzvah to do staka, right? Even if you don't have an ani, if you go find and you do it, it's a mitzvah. There's a mitzvah to put on tefillin. Even if you don't have tefillin, you have to go find the tefillin and put it on. Is this one of those mitzvot that you have to go around try to find the nest when its season comes? The Gemara already um, says that that's not the case. The Gemara says in, uh, on page 141 of Masachet Chulin that you don't have to go around trying to find the nest and, and, and do it. So that's out of the picture. But there is a very large machlok, there is a very large debate within the halachic authorities whether when you see, you come across a kansi pole. Right? You see your neighbor's um, tree, there is a nest, there's going to be soon um, laying, laying eggs and chicks. So do you have an obligation to go do it? Or is it optional? You don't really have to do it, but if you did do it, then you get a mitzvah. Which one of these two is it? Which obviously makes a, a very large difference. You're going, in my case, you're, you're, going under, you're sitting in a park under the, uh, the gazebo, and you see the birds are there. Do you have to go bring something there and climb up and go get it? Or is it just a nice thing you don't really have? Beit as the machloket between chavot yair, which is Rabbi Yair Bakrak, one of the, the greatest of the halachic arbiters of, of, of this past, uh, past millennia. Or maybe it's like Khatam Sofer that you don't have to do it unless you need the chicks, unless you need the eggs. If you don't need the eggs, if you don't want to make omelet right now, or you don't want to, to, to give the, the, the chicks as, as pets, as the fishing toy back then to, to your kids, then you don't have to do it. 
So that's Khatam Sofer's opinion. And the first one is Chavot Yair. So this is known as the debate between the Chavot Yair and Khatam Sofer. But really, the truth is that this, is, this goes much beyond that. It's starting from the, the time of the medieval authorities of Halakha. Already Rabbeinu Yerucham, which is the student of, of the famous Rosh, Rabbeinu Asher, he says, like, like the Chavot Yair, he says, if you see it, you must do it. And many others follow his, his footsteps as well. The Birkei Yosef, um, which is the Chida, Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Chaim Yosef David Azulai, one of the Sephardi Gedolim of, of, of past 300 years, one of the greatest ones. In Birkei Yosef, he writes the same thing. The Arucha Shulchan, Chacham Tzvi. Many others, they all write that a person that sees it and you come across, you have to do it. On the other hand, the vast majority of the, the halachic authorities, they say no. It's only when you need the, the chicks or you, when you need the eggs, that's when you have the mitzvah. Short of that, you don't have to do it. So basically the mitzvah is telling you, if you want to get the, the, the eggs, if you want to get the chicks, do not touch the mother. Don't take the mother with it. Send the mother away, and then you could, you, you're more than welcome to, to get the chicks. And that is the opinion of, of the majority of the Rishonim. The, the Ran and Masachat Chudin, Rabbeinu Nisim writes that, the Meiri, many of the Rishonim, <coughs> the Sefer Chinuch, Khatam Sofer, and many others, you know, the, there is a very large list of all of the poskim that they hold you really don't have to necessarily do it. If you did it, if you need it, then you, you, you do it. Otherwise, what's the halacha? Rabbi Shlomo Zarmar Orbach, Rabbi Chaim Kadievsky, Rabbi Yashiv, all of them, they write that the halacha is like the second one. It's not that if you pass by it, then you have to go get a ladder and go up and do it. But if you do do it, you have accomplished the mitzvah, and that's so that's great. So that's that's the first and foremost. Now, what type of a bird are we talking about? Is it any bird? It just says can't support. The Torah does not explain what type of a bird we're talking about. So the Gemara says that this is only kosher birds because we never find the Torah is very meticulous about choosing the words, and we never find sipor the word sipor being used for a non-kosher bird. So so therefore, if you see a non-kosher bird, not only there is no mitzvah to do it, if you do do it, you're in violation of inflicting pain on animals for no reason. Now, what do we, how, do we, how do we know what is kasher and what's not kasher? Now, the pasuk in, in Vayikra, in Sefer Vayikra, enumerates the, the parasha of kashrut of the birds. And it's a process of illumination. Unlike the, the animals that the Torah gives three simanim, three signs, it says any animal that has this, the two signs rather, any animal that has these two signs, it has, you could break it to three, it has, has hooves, has split hooves, and it chooses cut, then it's kosher. Any, anything short of that is not kosher. In birds, the Torah enumerates the names, counts up the names of the birds that are not kosher. And there are 24 of them. You go through the parasha, there are 24 based on the Gemara in Masechet Chudin 63. There are 24 different types of birds that are not kasher. And the Gemara says, it comes out that the majority of the birds are actually kasher. We do not eat majority of birds. Why? Because in the, in the, in the course of the history, of Jewish history, we have um, come across many doubts of what exactly is this types of birds. Is there the language of the, the biblical language saying uh, uh, different names, which we don't have, we don't call them the same names. When Jews went across the world in Galut, we lost the Mesorah of what is the word, what are exactly the meanings of the words in the Torah, names of this, this 24 different species of birds. So therefore, we are stringent halachically that we do not eat any Anything that we don't for sure know it's kasher. And that's the halacha. But, Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky, Rabbi Yashiv, many others, they write that that's only good for eating. When it comes to, you see the Gemara, the Mishnah really, on page 59 of Masechet Chudin, 
counts up three different signs for a kosher bird. Although it's not mentioned in the Torah, but the Gemara gives us the, 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 the signs. You have to have extra finger on the back and, the, and above the other fingers in, and in, in their uh, system of digestion, they have different parts and, and the parts have to be in different ways that you could peel, be peeled off with hand and so on and so forth. And those are very easy to verify. But even those signs, we don't rely on them. We don't rely on those signs when it comes to eating. We have to have a misora, what's kosher and what's not kosher, which actually opens opens uh, room for, for much debate about uh, around Thanksgiving, perhaps we're going to have a shiur here, whether or not you can eat turkey. Many Jews in America refrain from eating turkey because of this reason. And obviously us, the, the Svaradim, we are much more lenient, we, we do consume turkey. Now, the halacha when regarding can um, and is different. When it comes to the mitzvah of shiluach haken, any bird that qualifies within those three categories of the, the signs the Chazal gave, you could consume them, uh, you could not consume them, but you could, you could do the mitzvah of, um, of Ken Sipor on them because they, we could assume that they are kosher birds. But the problem is like this. If you remember, earlier on we said, if it's not a kosher animal, then not only you don't get the mitzvah, but you also get a biblical prohibition for inflicting pain on animals for no reason. So here, you don't know if it's kasher or if it's not kasher. So who gives you the right to do it? So on that, Rukhaim Kanievsky writes that once it's safek mitzvah, you perhaps are doing al pirov, you have majority on your side that this bird is kasher. Unless you know for sure it's not kasher. You have majority of the birds and you have all the signs. So most probably overwhelming um, rov that this is perhaps kasher. So although when it comes to eating, we don't want to touch it. But when it comes to the mitzvah of kishulach haken, then we are lenient to, to, to do the mitzvah on those. You know, uh, the, the quail, sparrow, the, um, the cardinal, all, all those birds fall into this category that we don't eat them but when it comes to mitzvah of shiluach haken they are subjects of the mitzvah and therefore if you see any of those um, three or four birds, birds around your house you could do the mitzvah of shiluach haken and those as well now speaking about this safek there's a very interesting safek that Rav Shammai Gross brings Rav, Rav Shammai Kat Gross in Shevet Kati. he says like this you have a mitzvah to train your children to do all of the mitzvot of the Torah. Once they are of age, of understanding, depending on how sharp and uh, bright they are, six, seven, eight, nine, is the age that you start teaching your, your kids to do all of the mitzvot. To keep between, uh, to wait between fleshik and milchik, to, to put tefillin, talit. And tefillin is a little different, it's different in hagim, it's, uh, it's not a good example. But all the mitzvot we start training our kids to do. So he asks a question and he doesn't answer it. He says, I have a doubt. When it comes to the mitzvah of Ken Sipur, Shiluach Haken, my kid is not bar mitzvah yet. Right? So by sending the mother, and taking the, the eggs or the chick, he's not establishing any mitzvah de oraita. He's only doing maybe a darabanan, maybe, if he, the chinuch is on him. But it's not based on that. That he's training himself to do it when he grows up. But right now, what is he doing? He's inflicting pain on a, on a bird for no reason. So therefore he says, I'm not sure if it's proper to have your kids. Sometimes it's very exciting. You find a can sipor in your, in your rooftop or whatever, and you bring all the family, all the kids, and you want to do it. Right, Rav Shammai is gross. Rav Shammai gross writes that it's not so simple. It's not so pashut. That this is a mitzvah, actually. So therefore he says, stay away from it. Now, this is different than what Reb Chaim Kanievsky says. Because Reb Chaim Kanievsky is talking about you, the adult, has, ha, has a suffix, if an a, if adult has a suffix, whether or not this bird is a kasher bird, and most probably it is, so then by doing it, you're, you're perhaps 90% chance doing a mitzvah that's from the Torah. But the kid is for sure not doing a mitzvah. Therefore, hence the, the, the doubt of 
Rabbi Gross in Shev in in, in uh, Shevet Akati, and therefore it's more proper to stay away from dealing with kids when it comes to the mitzvah of um, of Kansi Pors. That's that's the the first and foremost thing. Now the Torah says. Now, first of all, in both of the cases that we had, the first one was, was a dove, and the second one uh, was pigeon, rather, and the second one was a Canadian geese. So both of them are clearly kasher. So that much we have, we have in our case study, that much we have for sure have uh, a plus. Now, the Torah says, Ki kare when, he, when you come across it, when it happens to, to come, come your way. So the question is, what about if I have a nest in my backyard? I see him at the tree there or in the corner of the backyard or in my garden, there is a bird. Or I have chickens, right? And in the corner, they're sitting there and uh, the eggs are gonna ha are there or gonna hatch. Do I have a mitzvah? Or I have a finch, whatever it is the birds that I have, in, in, a, in a cage, right? And they're laying eggs and they're gonna have they're gonna have um, uh, chicks. Is that a mitzvah or is that not a mitzvah? So the Gemara says when he says ki karek and sibor lefanecha, when he happens on your way, is coming to exclude mezumanim, something that is there and it's yours and it's domestically um, set up. That's not included in the mitzvah. So all of the above cases that we mentioned basically is not is, is not part of the mitzvah. But if you have a strange, you know, not yours, a regular pigeon that came in your front lawn and made the nest, that's not mine. Whether or not I could do the mitzvah on that is a question which is extremely common. I get this question several times a year. That somewhere in the front lawn or in the backyard, a, a bird from, you know, from the wild came in and, and made the nest, and now they want to know if this is a mitzvah or not. Or some people. People have, have, who have older houses in their attic on top, sometimes they have a bird and they hear it and they go up there and see, lo and behold, there is a, there is a nest. Whether or not is that, is that a mitzvah or not? So the halakha is that it depends really on a category of choshen mishpat when it comes to acquiring things. There is a concept that the Gemara discusses and the Shulchan Aruch, the, the, the code of Jewish law, uh, brings us in choshen mishpat, which is the monetary laws, and, and, and chapter 100, was Resh Samachet, in, 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 in chapter 268, there the Shulchan Aruch says that your domain, anything that belongs to you, if something lands on it, which doesn't have other owners, becomes automatically yours. It's halachically yours. Someone else can't just come and get it. It's now halachically yours. So this nest is in my domain, it's my house. I own the property. So now, does that become mine? The al is yes. It does become yours, and therefore, it's not fit for the mitzvah of Shiluach HaKen. There's an anecdote, a, a, a detail, I'm saying, I'm gonna say it in parentheses, which is not really practical, so therefore I'm putting it in parentheses. Until, from the moment that the, the, the bird lays the egg, until it's sitting on it, it's not yours. Why isn't it yours? Because Halakha recognizes that for in order for you to take the egg is asur unless you make the mother fly away. So until the mother is sitting on it, you're not allowed to take the egg. So just like you can't take it, it does not automatically become yours either. But as soon as the bird flies one time, gets up off of the eggs, that moment, basically, the eggs are yours, so therefore you lost your mitzvah. But, there's a very easy way out of this. Very easy way out of this. Which is almost agreed upon by all of the halakhic authorities. Again, this we're talking now monetary laws. When, when you sell your chametz and Pesach, right? It's very easy, you fill up a form, you give it to the rabbi. But what does the rabbi do with that? He sits with a non-Jew. 
He sits with the non-Jew, and he goes through seven or eight different modalities of, of kinyanim, of, of acquire, means of acquiring, and one of them is this very thing. We give, I do it with, with the non-Jew, and I give a down payment on behalf of everyone that I am representing. I say, look, this is, a, he, he, I give it beforehand to him as a gift, and the non-Jew gives it to me as a down payment, says, okay, this $20 is down payment, to rent all of the places that the chametz is there. The attic, whatever, wherever you have it, the, the garage, the, the cabinets, the place of the chametz when it, it belongs to the goy, even if it's rented, then it's kinyan chaser. You, on, 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 on top of the, the rent, the acquiring of the domain, you get anything that's in it as well. That's one of the seven things that we use. So this is the same thing. But there is a way, very easy way out of it. What's the way out of it? You could announce that I do not want to acquire any nest or, or, or eggs or, or chicks that is going to be in my domain. You say it in this season, now is the time for it. You say it once and you're good to go. And this is again, although some of the great people like Shlomo Zama Orbach in, in his Shuvot Minchat Shlomo and in Shilot Shuvot Kinyan Torah and Chalik Gimel Many others, they disagree with this, but the overwhelming majority of the achronim, of the halachic authorities, they say this one little saying, one sentence, works. And Rabbi Yashiv and Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky and others, they go as far as Rabbi Ben-Sion Abba Shaul in his Chidushim and Kitubot, they go as far as saying, that you could do it once in a lifetime for every, for you move into the house, say, look, I don't want, from now until Mashiach comes, I don't want to acquire my chaser, to, to, to be kone, to acquire any nests, birds, chicks, eggs, nothing. And that works. There is even a debate as far as if, you, if it's mukhach. You never take chicks. See, someone called me recently. He said, Rabbi, I never take birds or chicks or eggs. I, I don't need them. So I never said it. And here I see already the, the, the eggs are laid. So I've missed it, I didn't say. Can I still do the mitzvah or not? What would you say? Based on what we said, no. Because the eggs are late, the mother already has gotten up once at least from, from them. So you should Allah. I told him you could still do it. Why? Because aside from Rabbi Yashiv, Allah wa Shalom, Rabbi Yosef Shalom, Yashiv, all the other ones, are Pinchas Scheinberg, all, these are all the greatest halachic authorities of the past generation. Right? Rabbi Pinchas Scheinberg, Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky, Rabbi Ben Abba Shaul, they all say if it's obvious that you would not want to take it aside from the mitzvah, if it's pashut and obvious, then you are not um, the owner of that, that nest. We are not there yet. We are going to get there. So that is the halakha. The halakha is that if it's in your backyard, although it's your domain, and in laws of, of, of acquiring land, any land that belongs to you acquires things that's on it, in this specific case, in 21st century, I don't, most of us, I think, it's fair to say, we're not interested to climb trees and, and addicts to go get, um, you know, a little... So therefore, there is enough to rely on that if you have any of those scenarios, even if you didn't say it, now that you go out of this shore, you should say, say I don't want my house to, to acquire it for me. This way you cover all of your grounds. But even if you didn't, and tomorrow you find out that in your backyard or front lawn you have something, then um, certainly you could do it. And if it's in your front lawn, then perhaps you have even more to rely on because your chaser, your domain, only acquires things for you if it's chaser and meshumerit, if it's a guarded domain. The front lawn that's open to the whole everyone and everyone could see it and go touch the nest that's not really mishumar that's not um, protected therefore it is not yours anyways even if you didn't say it so front lawn is even better but whether it's in front lawn attic on top of the roof in the backyard in the tree um, you could really do the mitzvah even if you um, did not yet mention the um, the thing now once you mentioned the the, the bracha whether, whether or not a person says a bracha and mitzvah shluach haken is really a debate within the Rishonim. 
On one hand, you have the Rambam, the, many of the great Rishonim, that they so, it sounds from their language, the Rambam, the, the, the um, Yeruham, the Rabad, the Rambam is a mistake, the, the Rabad writes, the Rambam in te, the Rabad in Mimdeim, he writes that, that you should say Bracha on Al Shiluach Aken. Right? But many others disagree with that. Although Sefer HaMakna and Kiddushin writes it, but many others disagree. The Rashba um, writes in, in, in Chalak Aleph of his Teshuvot, in Siman Yudchet, he says, we don't make a bracha on mitzvat shiluach haken. And the, the majority of the Rishonim, they follow the same pattern, that we don't make a bracha, and that's the halacha. Shukha Aruch, you see, that, that no, no one really brings in the code of halacha that you say bracha on it. Why don't you make a bracha? Because we mentioned, if it's the father, not the mother, right? Then there's no mitzvah. It has to be the mother. If it's um, not a kosher bird, then it's no mitzvah. And above all, who says you're gonna do the mitzvah? Let's say you say the bracha, baruch atah Hashem, and then before you, you you know it, you fall down or uh, the bird flies off without you shooing it away, and then you lost the mitzvah, right? So therefore, we don't make a bracha. Actually, a humorous story. There's a joke they say um, from the briskers. Uh, all the all these types of jokes are uh, are cynical, but just to you know to lighten up, they, they say the brisker is walking next to him, and a, a terrorist comes wants to kill him. So he says, "You want to kill me?" He says, "Yes." He says, "Give me give me a few seconds." He says, "Sure." And he says a bracha on Kiddush Hashem. He's doing the mitzvah of Kiddush Hashem, being killed for being a Jew. He says, Baruch Atah Hashem, Akenu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kiddushanu B'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu Al Kiddush Hashem. And the terrorist guy is looking at him, shackling and closing his eyes and screaming the bracha. He says, this guy is, is, is nuts. He's crazy. I'm not going to kill him. Right? So he starts walking away. And the guy says, new, new. Hey. He's made a bracha already. Right? <laughs> So it, it's it's not clear that you could do actually the mitzvah. So therefore, Rashba writes, we don't make a bracha on um, on the mitzvah of shiluach haken. But now, once we mention the mother and the father, that's also a very important element. Meaning, in every case of shiluach haken, it's 50-50 chance. It's a 50-50 chance whether you're doing the mitzvah or you're not doing the mitzvah. If it's the father, then you you have no mitzvah. So what do you do? The basic way is to educate yourself in the looks of the different um, different birds. Each one of them, the mother and the father, they slightly look different. Some of them, it's very obvious. Some of them are more more subtle. And then the pattern of their, their taking care of the nest also is different. So I give you a tip which is very easy. Um, I happen to, to have educated myself a little bit more. So most of the kosher species, I could tell you by the look um, if, if it's the father or the mother. But regularly speaking, in, 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 in this town, what you're going to find is pigeons or doves. And pigeons and doves, if you want to do it, wait until the nightfall. Because almost at all cases, the, the night shift is the mother. The night shift is the mother, and the, the father and mother, they, <coughs> they, um, they exchange, they, they, they switch around during the course of the day. Now in my case, how did I know? Um, this is the first case, was years and years ago, so I wasn't even sure if the pigeon was the, the, the mother or the father. So when I did it, and the, the pigeon went and sat somewhere else, um, after a few minutes, I put the, the, the chicks back, and we sat there to continue the, the meal. After about half an hour, the other bird came, and they switched. So I did it again. So between the two times that he did it, at least one of them was the, the, the mother. So we were, we were sure that uh, actually we got the mother there too. But in the case of the, the Canadian geese, the, the mother and the father look extremely different. So it's very easy to tell. And, uh, and I got attacked with the, by the father in the, middle, in the midst of the, uh, the, the doing of the mitzvah. But uh, they're pretty aggressive. But the, but the mother was sitting there and that was, that was pretty obvious. But if you don't have the knowledge, so that then you only have 50% chance that you got the right, the right bird. And uh, if you don't have the right bird, so then, then there's no mitzvah because the pasuk explicitly says, Ve'ha'em robetzet al the, 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 the mother is sitting on the, um, on the chicks, not, not the fathers. That's, um, 
Um, that's one thing. And the second thing is, it, it has to be because the Pasuk says, if the mother is standing around, is not actually on top of the nest, then you have to wait for it to go on top. If it's not there, even though that's in, uh, on the site, so to speak, it's not considered a mitzvah. So that, those are two two details that one has to be um, one has to be aware of. So now, um, oh, it's late. The shiluach. What is considered exactly sending away the bird? That's that's good. That's very true. So surprisingly, many of the medieval, medieval authorities of Halakha, including Rambam, including Rabbeinu Bachaye, and Rashi, and, and page 142 of, of Masechet Chulin, at least according to one of his explanations, they all say that you have to actually grab the mother and then send it. Because when the Pasuk says, send away the mother, if you don't have it, then you're not sending it, you're just shooing it away. So they seem to say that you have to actually, which makes the, the mitzvah perhaps ten times more difficult. But at the same time, um, the halacha is not like that. The halacha, Shulchan Aruch, the Chazonish, many others, say that the shiluach does not mean that you have to take it and send it, but rather, as long as you have the domain yours, basically, it's you, you have the nest afterwards, and the mother was there, you caused it to go away, that is fine. And that's the halacha. So therefore, even if it's on a higher place, and you can't put a, um, let's say, a ladder to go up, because as soon as you put the ladder, the, the, you could take a, a long stick and shoo it away, and then go up and, 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 and get the, um, the chicks or, or, or the nest. So that's, uh, that's one, one important, important point, which uh, really, although the Rishonim write that you have to, um, you have, to have the, um, uh, the, the mother in your hand, the Halakha really is not like the Rambam and Rashi. Is, as long as you shoo them away, that is good enough. Now, the um, case that we had, obviously, the, in, in, the, in the second case, by the, by the geese, I was there and it was on the, on the floor, so that was easy to send it away and um, I could have even really taken the mother. Um, I tried taking it, maybe God got a hold of a little bit of his body, but basically I sent it away directly. In the other case, it was more through showing it away before I went up, and that halakhically also works as well. Now here is the tricky part. What do you do with the chicks afterwards? Do you have to actually take them home? Or can you just give it a kiss and put it back in its place? Which is the difference between the two cases that we had, right? In the first case that we had, uh, we just put it back. In the second case, we took it and we used it actually in the incubator for a project for the kids. Now, in, indeed, the Birkei Yosef, the Chida, um, alongside with Aruch HaShulchan, and many great people, especially within the, the, the Sephardic scheme, Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky says this as well, but, but the Betlechem Yehuda is Rabbi Yehuda Yash. The, many of the Sephardic scheme who were more influenced with the Zohar, Zohar HaKadosh seems to say that you actually have to take the, 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 the chicks or the egg. So according to that, in the first case, you know, we didn't get that. In the second case, Actually, it's very interesting. Um, I felt bad to take all of the things. So I took only one of them. And a few days later, when we came to show the nest of the, the Canadian geese to, to the rest of the children, we realized that um, the very heavy rain, the East Coast rain that had come before, had it was this was next to a, a river in a park, and a, the rain had basically flooded the entire nest, and all of it got destroyed. The only remnants of that that uh, the geese family was this actually one egg that that, that hatched in the incubator and, and was given to the farm later on. But that, according to Birkei. Yosef and and um, and Rabbi Yehuda Yash and Rabbi Kanievsky, that actually, based on Zohar Kadosh, that is the actual mitzvah to actually take it for yourself. It's not the plate. Okay, I take it, I put it back. But nevertheless, many great people, Chacham Tzvi, many many great names, they still hold that as long as it is yours, you do a halachic acquirement of of um, of, of kilian, you take 
pick it up three tfakhim, um about 10 inches, 12 inches in the air, that is yours. Now you could do whatever you want with it. You could eat it, you could you could give it away to someone else as a gift, or you could just decide to put it back on. Eat the chicken. Now, if you have if you have the um, um, privilege of having a whole group, like we said, the case, case of Rabhaim Kanievsky with five Avrahim, so how do you do it that many people could do the same mitzvah? If it's now mine, so then it's not anybody else's. How can someone else do the mitzvah? Halakhically speaking, it is it is doable still because again this goes into the laws of of monetary laws of you know what how is how do you do the means of acquirement and the uh, modal modalities of of of, of kinyan and just like you could acquire something, you could also give away something. You could be mafkir, make it hafkir, like, like we do it by Pesach, Erev of Pesach in the morning. When you have searched for chametz, what do you say? You say, any chametz that I have not seen, even though that's mine, and it's sitting in my domain. And the Torah says, if you have any chametz of yours in your domain, you have, you're in, in transgression of, a, of two averot of the Torah, how do we take care of that by saying a word? What we say basically means the following. We say, even if I have it and I own it, and I just missed it now, I don't want it to be mine. I am um, take, I'm nullifying my ownership over it, and I'm declaring it ownerless, hefker. So just like you could do it with your chametz or with any, any other, you know, you could take your camera and put it in the, in the street and say this, this is ownerless. And if someone hears you say that publicly and takes it, he has not stolen. He has actually acquired something from hefker, which was in a state of, of being ownerless. Same thing is over here as well. When you take this, it's halakhically yours. But if you put it down and say, I am mafkir this, and there are at least one or better three people there, and they hear you, then it's actually ownerless, and, and you could you, you could do it one after the other. Several different, multiple different people could still do um, do the mitzvah of shulach haken. So, just like we said, this is one of the mitzvot of the Torah that. Um, uniquely, only only two mitzvot have a schar. And this, the Torah says, Leman Yarechun Yamecha, the Midrash says, it brings the Geula. However it works, perhaps, the, the, you know, we, we relate to the compassion that Hashem has for, for our our nation, for the world, for the people in the world. And Bezrat Hashem, if we, we get the opportunity of doing this mitzvah, among other mitzvot, at least now we have, we're uh, a little bit more educated of what's a question, what's not a question, what is really indeed the mitzvah, and whether or not um, we should actively approach it or not. Um, and Bezrat Hashem, we should all be zoche to, to do this mitzvah. Amen. Can, can you return? I open it for, for questions for.